Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. I know we're here at the top of the hour, so we'll just get started while we welcome everyone. Um, you are joining um, the CSA, um, how Salesforce takes ISVs to App Exchange from idea to App Exchange in just three months. And I'm sure all of you are just dying to hear all the details. Um, I am Leslie Tom, SVP of um, App Exchange Marketing at Salesforce, and I'm also a board member at the Cloud Software Association. If for those of you who don't know, we are an impactful network of partnership professionals at some of the world's leading SaaS companies. And you can learn more about the CSA at cloudsoftwareassociation.com. I'm joined here today by Mike Creedon, Managing Director of Salesforce Accelerate. Um, and we also have other two uh, guest speakers who are also founders uh, within our Salesforce ISV ecosystem. So Mike, I'll hand it to you to introduce Jennifer and Jason. Absolutely, thanks so much, uh, Leslie, and thanks everybody uh, for joining us. So uh, we, what we'll do is we're gonna be starting off with just a little bit of background just to set context. And then we're actually gonna be hearing from a few of our graduates from our Accelerate program. So uh, as we'll be discussing, we actually have two versions of the program. So what we thought we'd, uh, we'd do is we'd have participants from each of the uh, program types uh, join us so that they can help to explain uh, what they went through, but also uh, be available for questions too um, after we go through our little interview. Yeah. So do you want to introduce uh, Jason and Jennifer now first and so we can get started? Okay. Yeah. Let me give you a top level here. So uh, Jason Briggs was a member of uh, our one of our first build cohorts when we were doing it uh, based on themes. And uh, Jason um, has a very interesting story that we'll get into, but Jason now is no longer a founder of one of those startups that, that he went through, but he actually was uh, acquired by Salesforce. And then we have Jennifer Mercer from Metazoa, and Metazoa is a current App Exchange partner, and she also has a long history in the ecosystem, uh, dating back almost to the beginning of Salesforce. Great. Um, so thanks, and we'll hear more from both uh, Jason and Jennifer, and right after I have a quick fireside chat with Mike um, about Salesforce Accelerate. Um, so Mike, you know, obviously you and I have worked together for many years, but you know, for everyone that's um, joining us here today, can you tell us a little bit more about what Salesforce Accelerate is? Absolutely. So Salesforce Accelerate is a is a corporate accelerator program for Salesforce. Uh, what we're trying to do with, with our program is help ISVs at their very early stage, help them get to market, help them get to market more assuredly and also faster. And then also um, later in the life cycle, we felt that we needed to provide additional investment for those partners that are growing so that they could actually grow faster and ultimately uh, succeed in scale. Great. And, um, you know, I think for a lot of folks, they really think about like, you know, why you started your journey. You know, you know, you've been at Salesforce for a very long time and you can tell everybody what that number is, but you know, why and when did you start this journey um, of, with Salesforce Accelerate? Of course, yeah. So, so I've been with Salesforce now for, you know, 19, almost going on 20 years now. Uh, seems like since the beginning of time actually, <laughs> but uh, it, it's been quite, quite an interesting journey. And I think one of the things to notice is that uh, from Salesforce's perspective, when we started the company, we always had this vision that there would ultimately be a platform um, that was needed in order to be able to provide the value to our customers. So in other words, you know, the ecosystem is most probably the most important thing around, around Salesforce right now. We always, you know, we're super proud of the, of the technology and innovation that we provide. But if you just look at the sum total of what um, ISVs and even SIs have mm -hmm. done around Salesforce, it's uh, it's tremendous in terms of the value that's being delivered to customers. So um, after after we took the the first steps in terms of building up the platform technologies, of course we needed to have ISVs come in, uh, help to validate the proposition, and ultimately get the uh, get the innovation injected into the ecosystem. And mm -hmm. our means of doing that was, of course, now the App Exchange. You know, looking mm -hmm. back on that, you know, you know, uh, we we have quite a history with that. But back in 2005, that was still just a, a glimmer in our eye. 
So yeah, tell, um, yeah, tell us more about that because obviously that would really, you know, a lot of people know this, but um, you know, Mark Mark uh, Benioff was really trying to grow Salesforce in the early days in the early 2000, and he received you know that specific piece of advice from Steve Jobs, which is um, you know really you need to really build this app economy. And you were there during those, you know, when we started thinking about app exchange and um, and basically that ecosystem that we had to build that became uh, part of your remit. Can you tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, the start of app exchange and the start of the incubator as um, back in that same right. year? Yeah, and that that I think goes hand in hand. And that, mm -hmm. that advice from Steve Jobs to, to Mark was really about, you know, going big and going fast. So mm -hmm. when we launched the app exchange, uh, the vision wasn't just to create a marketplace, you know, build it and they will come, but we actually um, were intentional in terms of actually selecting ISVs, helping seed them um, in terms of getting their apps to market. And then the next step in that, in right at the very beginning, was uh, specifically about helping them build their businesses. So mm -hmm. we announced the app, we announced the app exchange at Dreamforce 2005. We launched it January of 2006, and at exactly the same time, we actually launched the app exchange incubator. Mm -hmm. So the incubator was part of the initial push to go from, if you wish, the handful of apps that were obviously available at that time to hundreds of apps. So mm -hmm. two years of history, a little bit more, more than two years of history, but within two years of the of the incubator itself. Uh, we were we were very pleased to see that there was over 800 apps that were in market at that point. Of course, today we have thousands and thousands of apps, but uh, it had to start somewhere. So that was the right. initial vision in terms of not just helping folks build apps, but ultimately build thriving businesses around the the app exchange. Yeah, and and that was great because you really started that entire initiative around the Salesforce incubator, and I think you know that was like a six month residency based program. But how did you take Salesforce Incubator and then evolve it to what we have today, which we call Salesforce Accelerate? Of course. So, so one of the things that we realized early on is, is that with the Incubator program, while it was great because it's super high touch, you know, we co-reside and co-mingle, so to speak. There, there's a lot of learning that can be done, but it was inherently limited in terms of reach. So mm -hmm. 2016, was the year that we actually uh, switched gears. We actually resurrected the incubator, but with the intention of converting it into an accelerator program. So uh, we kicked it off again, actually in conjunction with the first resurgence, if you wish, from a developer st uh, standpoint uh, of uh, Trailhead DX, which is when we actually launched Trailhead DX in, uh, in 2016. And mm -hmm. uh, shortly thereafter, we actually uh, broke apart the program Philosophically, what we thought was that we wanted to commingle our in-market partners with new partners so that it isn't just learning from Salesforce, but we would actually bring the collective consciousness of the ecosystem together so that we could all learn together. So actually what we did is we, we took a step forward. We actually broke it out into two distinct programs, build and grow. Build is for the new partners getting their first uh, app to market and mm -hmm. grow was for existing partners in market already seeing some success that we want to further invest in. So those two pieces were then put together and now we're actually seeing the returns from that because now we have an alumni network of over 130 companies mm -hmm. um, that can ultimately be tapped into to help those build partners as we bring them on board. So we have this virtuous flywheel that, that we've created at this point. Yeah, that's great. And I think I think you covered some of the things that we had, to, you and I have uh, know about in terms of Accelerate Build. And, you know, obviously we're going to talk to Jason about the Diffio story. Um, you know, the can you tell us a little bit more about what has changed in Excel, Salesforce Accelerate in the last few years? I know the focus for us is a lot about equality and the things that we've been trying to do. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that in the build and grow sure. perspective? Sure, sure. So, so as I mentioned before, we have these two programs build for new partners coming into the ecosystem, grow mm -hmm. for existing partners in the ecosystem. One of the things that, that we've seen is that just from an equality and equity uh, point of view, that mm -hmm. uh, our ecosystem reflects the general tech ecosystem. And one of the things that we're trying to do is be intentional about driving equality 
specifically within our ecosystem, providing opportunity where, where that hasn't been provided before. So we actually took our build program and we've actually uh, provided for a 50% allocation for underrepresented group founders mm -hmm. such that we can then have a meaningful impact in terms of driving equality into the ecosystem. So we're actually, you know, through our actions, what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually provide the, the, uh, the, the, the leaders, if you wish, of tomorrow that will help to help us break through and actually create a more um, equitable um, ecosystem for all. And, th and that's on the build side. And then specifically mm -hmm. with Grow Right Now, what we're trying to do is, is that we're trying to really help our partners strategically align with Salesforce. Because as we go, you know, as we continue to move forward, let alone just through our own innovation, but also through acquisitions, we just announced the the closing of uh, Slack yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know, major major announcement, huge you know technology opportunity and application opportunity for our partners as well. How do we ensure that our partners understand what it is that we're doing, but also why we're doing it? So mm -hmm. th that's really a big piece of the program. Yeah, great. Um, we're going to talk more with uh, our guests as well, but you know, our you know, I, I think I get this question all the time too, and I think for those of you who are joining, you know, our title is you know from idea to app exchange in just three months. You know, Mike, you and I talk about this all the time. How realistic really is that number? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you have to be a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit forward to, to get folks' attention. But mm -hmm. I mean, the, the reality in terms of what we've seen is that, um, you know, intent and desire is there for folks to get to market. The reality in terms of actually building an outstanding application for the Salesforce customer, mm -hmm. it requires additional know-how. So let's call it, you know, that net remaining engineering plus an understanding of you know, what is the current day um, Salesforce customer experience? I mean, so those mm -hmm. are two things in particular that are more nuanced and more difficult to really mm -hmm. rock. And there, there's many ways of, of skilling yourself up, you know, tapping mm -hmm. into existing customers, finding other partners to speak to, um, talking with people at Salesforce as well, um, mm -hmm. participating in the, in the um, community events that, that we do. All of these are valid. but Fundamentally, uh, our program actually is focused on driving that know-how, being yes. able to, if you wish, jump the shark, so to speak, yes. not, not be fall prey to the pitfalls that are along the way. And in that way, we're confident that within the three months that we have uh, together with our build cohort, that what we can do is we can help them effectively, not just design their app, but architect mm -hmm. an effective app develop the strategy to go to market and actually execute on that vision. Right. And that's the fundamental, if you wish, the uh, you know idea to app in three months. Yeah, great. One of the questions that has come up, and I think this is super relevant, is you know, what is the selection process for ISVs and the accelerator? Like, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the existing core that we're just making the selection for and sure. you know, future core yeah. cohorts? Yeah. So so we're actually we're we're in selection right now. We actually just closed out applications for our next build cohort, which is starting at the end of August. Um, and that just closed out last week. So right now, now, as we go through selection, we have a set of we have a set of criteria that we're looking for. Specifically, we're looking for the ability to execute on your vision. So, um, what we want to do is we want to be you know as egalitarian as possible, regardless of where folks are located uh, geographically. Uh, we are time zone constrained, if you wish, in terms of when we deliver the live portions of the program. Um, but nonetheless, what we do is we allow uh, for participants uh, from effectively all over the world. Our last cohort, for example, um, had participants from India and Israel and from a Pacific time zone perspective that was challenging, but we actually made that work. Um, yeah. In terms of the criteria that we're looking for on the on the build side versus grow, so build what we're looking for, one is that ability to execute. Two is, is that they've actually um, have some demonstrable insights into what it is that they're building. This can be demonstrated through, you know, significant domain expertise or experience that they have, validation from early customers. Um, they can be as far along as actually perhaps being in market already, but not being on the app exchange. 
There's always that last mile problem, you know, that folks have to get to. Um, so, so that's in the build context. In the grow context, what we're doing is, is that we're actually becoming more, um, if you wish, intentional in terms of actually selecting candidates that we can invite into the program. It's still an open application process, but now what we're doing is, is that we're actually reaching out to, if you wish, pre-qualified candidates. And these would be pre-qualified because we know the business that they're doing with Salesforce. Once they reach a particular threshold in terms of growth, we can then ask them, would you like to participate in, in this upcoming cohort? And in that way, what we can do is, is that we can then uh, mesh, if you wish, the interest from the, from the participants or prospective participants with our desire to actually help them. Because it's one of those things that there's many partners that can do things on their own and want to just you know keep, keep growing fast um, on their own. And others, you know, say, no, I think that we can use some help at this point. And we'd like to learn not just from you, but from the other members of the cohort as well. Yeah, great. Thanks. Great question. Thanks, Mike, for that answer. And another great uh, question was really about if you're not officially selected, how can you really take advantage of some of the content? And Mike and I are actually working on that very question because so much of the content is so relevant and we want to scale everything. In fact, we were just in a meeting um, to talk about how we massively scale this very relevant and critical content. Mike, do you want to make any other comments about that? Yes, uh, I have to. Uh, I have to put my safe harbor up first, first, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but before I get into that. But uh, yeah, one of the things that we've been doing now that we've uh, we're, we're actually just about to launch cohort twelve right now. Um, so we have a lot of experience in terms of. Uh, um, helping partners um, ultimately get to market and then ultimately grow and, and succeed. So what we're doing is we're taking a lot of that content now, we're refactoring it, and we're using a vehicle that we have, which is called Partner Learning Camp, which is um, a learning platform that's available to all of our partners. Mm -hmm. So on the horizon, we're actually planning for this now, is, is that we're going to start to take this content, we're going to provide it um, for everyone's benefit, and specifically for the cohorts, we're then gonna be using that content as preparation for the discussions and workshops that we actually go through while we're in cohort. Yeah, so great question, thank you. Good so question. I know we wanna to get to the founders. Um, I do wanna just say as more of a fun aside is Mike has this term that he uses all the time and he created these t-shirts, which he's gonna show off now, but you often say this, you know, be the goat, be the goat. What does that mean and why is that your motto for Salesforce Accelerate? Right. I think that when people first see it, they, they think it's the greatest of all time. Yeah. And we like to think that, that our partners are the greatest of all time, of course. But, uh, but specifically, what we did is we chose uh, one of our friendly characters from, from Salesforce, which is uh, Cloudy the Goat. And mm -hmm. Cloudy the Goat, you can read up on the personas of each one of these uh, characters. But uh, one of the top level uh, characteristics of Cloudy is, is that she's all-knowing, confident, understands the platform. These are all attributes that we're hoping to project onto our participants as they come out of the program, because it's really about the confidence comes from knowing, and our objective is to be able to pass on that knowledge um, through the experience of the cohort itself. So that's yeah, where the big code comes from. Yeah, a lot of fun. I asked the same question, greatest all time? And he was like, nope. Very deep, a deep message. Um, so let's move on to uh, hearing from our founders. I'll just flash up the, the slide so everyone who may have joined a little bit late can see um, who we have here um, on our call. Uh, so Mike, take it away. Of course. Well, welcome uh, Jennifer and Jason, just to make sure that we have you uh, teed up here. How are you doing, Jason? Great. Great. Awesome. Good to be here. And Jennifer, you as well? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, so we have you highlighted now, which is great. So thanks so much for joining us today to talk about your respective partner journeys and your Salesforce Accelerate experience. Uh, both of you actually have had very different origin stories with respect to uh, your partner journey with Salesforce. So what, why don't we start with you, Jason? You know, as someone who entered the Salesforce ecosystem, by way of one of the build cohorts, as I was mentioning before. Your startup story is, is quite interesting, I think. You know, one of a series of rapid acquisitions, you know, first with Diffio acquiring your startup, uh, MetaSearch, back in, way back in 2016. And then with Salesforce acquiring Diffio just recently here in uh, 2019. So 
first of all, congratulations on batting a thousand in your early entrepreneurial career. That that's that's quite impressive. Thank you. So 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 just just as a question, I think it'd be interesting for, for the audience to kind of know this. And we were getting to selection before. You know, at what stage of your product and startup uh, life cycle did Diffio apply for the build program? I mean, like how much knowledge of the Salesforce ecosystem, platform, and products did you guys have at the time? Yeah, good, good question. So we actually, Diffio started out as a research project where we were working with DARPA and other government programs to build recommendation engines. It was very AI research heavy at the time, focused on writing papers and evalu doing, running lots of modeling evaluations. Um, the goal of all that research was to automatically accelerate the growth of a knowledge base like Wikipedia, for example. How can the, an AI automatically create and continue to update something like Wikipedia. So my first company that you mentioned, Meta and Diffio merged right when Diffio started to productize that research. Uh, we came in as the, the product heavy hitters and they brought the research and the, the, the combination was, was very strong. But the idea was for, for Diffio, the, the productized version of Diffio was an AI assistant, AI research assistant that would go out and run searches on your behalf based on context that it understands from all the windows you have open like a teammate sitting next to you, understand your context, go run a bunch of searches, bring back the best relationships, the best relationships, pe people and companies that are connected to the people and companies you care about that you have open right now. Um, and that was the core idea. And one year after we had brought the companies, those two companies together, we had some initial core successes at a few companies. Um, but the key question was, how are we gonna scale this? How are we gonna scale this up quickly it's too much effort to do, you know, an in initial installation and build on top, figure out what platform they use, build on top of it and do all that custom work. So one of our advisors recommended that we apply to the Salesforce accelerator because Salesforce has so many existing customers. So there's a massive customer base and the platform makes it so easy to add applications like Diffio very easily. It's very, it's built to be, to incorporate new technologies and new applications. So at that point, answer your question, we knew very little about Salesforce, except for that it was a very successful CRM company and that they kept calling me every week asking me to use it. <laughs> but um, those, those were my two, my two data points. But um, at Diffio, we, we, our, our process was always, to, our strategy was to lean in and take any opportunity that it presented itself. So we decided to apply. Um, I, I spent the weekend digging into as much material about Salesforce as we could to build out the application. And, um, the more, the more I learned, the more I watched a bunch of videos and saw content, the more I was really impressed by the approach to enabling partners and, and um, making make, uh, like a, a collaborative approach where Salesforce pushes forward the partners to solve key business problems and everyone succeeds together. I didn't, hadn't really seen that, that much of a focus on that anywhere else. So, um, we did a bunch of research on that. I was very impressed. And then we also reached out to everyone that was at all connected to Salesforce in our networks to validate the idea of Diffio plus Salesforce. And we got some great feedback. So we didn't really know much at the beginning, but um, that was our, you know, we were at a point where we really needed to, to scale beyond initial customer traction at a couple of sites. Um, so that was our status at that point. Right. I think uh, I can remember back to the selection committee when we were reviewing applications and your application came up. And uh, one of the things to note is, is that there was five co-founders that were listed, that it was a mixed team, men and women, co-founders as well. And we just, I remember remarking, it was like, holy cow, this is like the Immensa Club that's, uh, that's applying for, <laughs> for Accelerate. We didn't know what the outcome would be or could be. We just saw that there was a lot of potential there. So turning it back to you, I mean, coming into the program, into the build program, um, what were you trying to get out of the program? I mean, you know, could you maybe go back in time to, to think about what it was like coming into it? You know, what were you yeah. high level um, trying to gain from, uh, from the program? For sure. So we, act, we had three initial goals that we set for ourselves. Um, we wanted to, as quickly as possible, one, we wanted to immerse ourselves in the Salesforce culture and um, get as, as deeply embedded with Salesforce vibes as we could so that we could understand what it takes to go to market 
build an effective go-to-market plan with Salesforce um, and really understand how to be able to talk to Salesforce customers and employees and what are the, the, the use cases that we're optimized for. So the first was this program ought to really help us immerse ourselves in Salesforce. Um, the second key thing was being able to, second key goal was to design and build a Diffio integrated version of um, of the, a Salesforce application that included Diffio um, to be complete at the end of the program because that was that was our goal. That was the stated goal of the program, and we didn't really know much about. Um, we we had never done any engineering with Salesforce before. We didn't know anything about Apex. We didn't know anything about anything, and so that was our second goal. The third goal was to sort of um, use the program as a launching pad for aggressive networking into Salesforce, where um, we could leverage all the possible, we could build as much excitement for what we were doing um, that would lead to partnership opportunities, potential sales. We didn't really know, but we just knew that if we got out, got got the word out there about Diffio and, and networked as much as possible, some, some great things could probably happen. Great. Well, well then that a follow-on to that would be, yeah, so a follow-on to that would be, you know, what was the experience like then? So you, you were at the yeah. beginning of that cycle, so you actually got to spend a little bit more time with us as well. Um, you talked mm -hmm. about the networking piece and being able to plug into the ecosystem and all that. So just take us through kind of that, that day in the life and if there were any highlights along that along the way um, that you could uh, relate to to others. Yeah, we, we well, we, we did all the, the three things that I said our plan was, so that, that, that was good. So it's good to, to have a plan and, and execute it and succeed. So um, we were able to, through the programming that was set up, by, by the accelerator program and by the, all the different events that were set up, um, we gained a couple of key touch points that we were able to use to very quickly scale that and, talk and, and get connected with key decision makers in sales, in product, in all the key places that matter to us. Um, so that was the, we succeeded on that point. Um, and we really learned about much faster than we would have just from the outside. We learned about, again, those key use cases that drive Salesforce success, the what's the culture like and how do how do salespeople engage at Salesforce and then what incentivizes both employees and customers. So we got that, we got the networking down, we got the uh, full understanding of what Salesforce is and how it operates. Um, and then we use both of those to build a really effective application that um, took Diffio, the AI research assistant that I had talked about earlier and bring it completely into Salesforce, where if you're looking at a record, you want you have an opportunity open and you want to sell to a potential customer, but you don't have many ways to reach them. The Diffio agent is going to go out and run a bunch of searches, learn as much as it can about them, um, and then bring back, here's a couple of paths that you can use to connect to this customer. So we built the first iteration of that um, much faster than we probably could have without the program, because it would have taken a bunch of fits and starts. We would have had to iterate a whole bunch of times much more than we actually had to. Um, so that that was the those three were the, the key things that we actually did. Um, but the, the the end result of that is we were fairly quickly connected to some very powerful champions inside of Salesforce. Um, and because we knew how to how to go to market with Salesforce, um, together with those champions, we were able to to be very successful very quickly. Um, and we had a very compelling demo of Salesforce and Diffio, here's how we make your life better. And uh, and the, the, the high point, of course, was the winning the final demo jam. Um, and the <laughs> side note, I still have the trophy in, in my office, but um, the, final, the final point that I wanted to share with everyone is because Salesforce has such a strong emphasis on storytelling, a well-crafted demo goes a really long way a demo that's not as much focused on the, the flashy features and all those kinds of things is much more the focus is on how can we help the customer succeed? How can we solve a, a simple problem for them repeatedly every day? Um, and so the Accelerate program helped us learn how to present that vision. And that was the, the key to some of our success. Great. Right. Hey, yeah, that, um, that's amazing. Yeah, a question that's uh, coming from the audience is uh, for uh, Jason, like what were your um, financial resources when you were getting started on this journey, just from an initial investment? Um, like funding for the company? Uh, yeah, so we, 
so we had we had raised we were uh, fairly unconventional I would say um, in that we raised mostly from angels and we we did not have any venture backing um, so we we raised money from uh, angels in mostly Boston and New York City and then um, raised about I guess I could, about two and a half million uh, was the initial fundraise that we did and that um, carried us all the way through to um, acquisition. Thank you. Anything else? Um, yeah, and I guess the one thing I wanted to say is that to your point earlier about trying to cut down the cycles, that's what happened for us. We were able to not do as many iteration cycles and hmm, what do we think that Salesforce customers would want? And then try and fail a bunch. Instead of having to do that, we had uh, the expert Mike who would say, that's a stupid idea, don't do that. We've, we've seen that before and be able to to quickly help us get through a lot of those cycles that would have been wasted otherwise, just because there's so much knowledge in the program and in, in the people involved, that we didn't have to, to, to spend our time doing that. Cool, cool. And then your your involvement in Salesforce Accelerated, it was just a stepping stone to your eventual, eventual acquisition by Salesforce, as I mentioned before. Can you talk with us about how you kind of architected your destiny, kind of orchestrated, you know, what would be leaving the program and then ultimately it was only a few years, um, you know, that, that timeline of let's say getting from, you know, going into market and then getting acquired by Salesforce. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the good news was the, the Accelerate program helped us get to market with that application a lot faster uh, because again, we, had, we developed those powerful champion relationships. They helped us take this app that we had built as part of the program and really get it in front of the customer and pitching to a customer right alongside Salesforce made the selling process so much more powerful than just, you know, tiny Diffio coming in and, you know, hope, hey, can we hopefully do a pilot? It was, it was serious sales right from the beginning. And so that, that was a, a key, key difference for us. And it was only able, we were only able to do that so quickly after the program because we had been through it. We had those champions. So that was great. Um, as Diffio evolved, though, over the years, uh, it became a lot more clear to us, at least, that we were a feature uh, that needed to sit on top of a product or a platform, or like a, a much larger platform. Um, because we connect to all the tools that you use every day, uh, we need to, to be either to be either build one ourselves, build a platform, which is a huge undertaking, or connect to one that that um, already existed. And Salesforce turned out to be the perfect platform for that. And we started to all these these um, epiphanies started going off while we were having these really powerful sales meetings with um, customers and Salesforce sales reps. And so I can't really talk too much about the, the process, but the key was having those really strong champions. Um, they were the, what really took us over the finish line. And they, they, the fact that we were able to help them identify the massive potential, and in many cases, they were convincing us of the massive potential, but um, the fact that together we saw that huge potential to unlock new business for Salesforce was really the key. And um, I, I can I can very definitely say that we likely would not have been acquired were it not for all the amazing knowledge that we gained from the program and everything that, um, or at least the speed that w w with which we were able to iterate in the program. So I wanted to say, uh, very, very much thank you to Mike and to the, the program. And, and I strongly recommend that anyone who's really, who's thinking about giving the program a look, um, definitely go for it and, and commit some resources to seeing if it's a fit for you and if, if, it, if it would make sense. Because the, the uh, yeah, those initial touch points that we got in the program were really the, the, the key that allowed us to um, get past the first wall of defense uh, that Salesforce usually puts up. Um, and because we were in the walls, we were able to network much more uh, really aggressively. Network. I have my, um, I wear my Salesforce incubator jacket. It's a little too hot for it right now, but I wear my Salesforce incubator jacket every single day, um, every single meeting of uh, the, during the acquisition and during all of our partner meetings. And we, we got this deep understanding about the culture and all of the things that make Salesforce tick that we would not have had without the program. So thank you again. Really appreciate it. Cool. Yeah. I, I, this, uh, I, we actually have a question that, that came in. Um, and I think, you know, with your success, everybody wants to be in a position where they can replicate something like that in terms of having great outcomes like that. It's a good, a good transition to bring you into the conversation, um, Jennifer, as well. 
So just in terms of like, what does it look like from the build perspective? Why don't we start, you know, start with you, uh, Jason, then we can actually then transition over to Jennifer because I have a bunch of stuff we want to talk with her about grow. But specifically, what, what did it look like for you in terms of like staffing, if you wish, this initiative from your side? Um, and specifically on the build side, obviously there's going to be a lot, you know, a lot more tech involved in terms of actually spinning up the app. But a lot of what we do is really understanding, you know, the dynamics of the ecosystem, getting to market and things like that. So what, what did you put forward in terms of resources in order to be successful? On our side, we, we dedicated one full, full-time engineer to the effort. And um, I spent a lot of time helping on the engineering, the building out building out the, the front end side of the application. And, and so we, we, I would say overall, we probably had three people dedicated to, or not dedicated, one person dedicated for a three people half time dedicated to building this out during the program. Um, and because the platform makes it so easy, you don't really need a massive engineering effort to integrate something you've already built into Salesforce. The whole, the whole idea is that um, it's, it's, there are, uh, the platform makes it easy to integrate something you may have already built um, into a Salesforce workflow very easily. So, um, yeah, I would say for us, we were sort of surprised. We were, we were planning to have to shift all of engineering over to, hey, everybody, we got to build a Salesforce app. And then we were able to cut that back, let them focus on the other customer engagements we had, and really quickly iterate on something that, that a smaller part of our team was able to build. And the even though it's 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 simple to build an initial integration with Salesforce, there are a lot of ways you can do it that you would regret later. And so, being part of the program and having the um, both uh, every every I think every cohort has a, a team that's specific that, that has a whole bunch of ISV experience. Having that team to be able to just go up to or Slack or talk to and ask, hey, is this a good idea? And have them be able to either shoot it down or support it was really helpful. Um, and made us uh, not make a lot of mistakes that I think we could have really. Right. And then what, what about Jennifer, from your perspective, being as uh, being a member of the uh, Grow cohort, uh, Grow, you're already a market, you already have a product. So what did kind of your, if you wish, team commitment be to, uh, to the program? Well, so uh, I think you mentioned before that I'm a second time ISV partner. So we were uh, a Part of the incubator program with my previous company, which I co-founded, called Dream Factory. And um, Dream Factory was uh, also one of the first to launch on the App Exchange. Uh, Dream Team, our project management application, was the first one. But then we went on to launch well over a dozen apps on the App Exchange. And we were really early adopters of the platform, which at that time was uh, a palette of APIs. But we also realized, like Jason is saying, that we had something to build on top of a platform more than just a product itself. And so that's where we came out with uh, one of our most popular products uh, during the Dream Factory years, which was release management and deployments and things like that. And when uh, we did go through an acquisition and a, a successful exit with Dream Factory and some of the founding key members of Dream Factory, we, we kind of knew where we wanted to go next and we were already thinking about it and already planning our next venture. And we knew that we wanted to come back to Salesforce, come back to the App Exchange and come back as an ISV partner. And there were several reasons for that. Many, uh, just we had over a decade of market research, obviously working with Salesforce, uh, Definitely a, a deep understanding of the technology by that point. I think uh, Bill, my my co-founder and CTO, was already working with David on DX, uh, you know, around 2015, 2016, and uh, or Dave Carroll, sorry, I'm saying his full name. Um, but we were we really understand the technology. We wanted to get back into the ecosystem, and uh, our product, uh, just by the nature of our product, we really work with Salesforce's very largest customers. And uh, being a smaller company, uh, you know, a startup, it's difficult to sell into the largest, you know, financial insurance, uh, government, et cetera, healthcare uh, companies in the world when you're a smaller company. But when you're a Salesforce ISV partner, you're already vetted, you've already gone through the security review, and uh, there's a huge trust there. So that's why we came back. And uh, very happy that we did, obviously. And it was about 
honestly, I looked, it was, it was a year later, Mike, that, that you approached us about coming into the grow program and, you know, being a startup and uh, trying to keep it smaller than we did with dream factory. Cause dream factory was very traditional. We've raised series A, B, C acquisition, et cetera. And we tried to do, because we, we, the, the product was really baked and we already had uh, gone to market, understood our, our ideal customer, um, had seen trends along the way uh, where we could add a lot of value uh, with our new product. Um, it was tough to dedicate a lot of resources, but we knew how important it was because Salesforce in 2006 versus 2017, 18 uh, is quite different, right? And uh, a lot of new folks, a lot of new relationships to build, uh, a lot of new technologies. So we we dedicated the resources and I would say it was invaluable and, and absolutely worth it and uh, really took us from uh, you know here to here, especially with our messaging and relationship building and being able to ask you know pertinent questions to department heads and uh, like Jason said, uh, you know be able to uh, not get the recognition, but really you know there's uh, how many apps on the app exchange right now like five thousand six thousand. So it, it gives you the opportunity, a yeah, a lot to to really to really um, get in there and and be relevant and and get that exposure. Right. Yeah. So I mean, one of the things that I think is uh, a question on folks' minds: understanding that you were in the ecosystem for a long time, you were a proven app exchange partner, you know, with Dream Factory. And now as a serial entrepreneur tends to do, it's like, hey, I know what the pattern is. I can actually shortcut this and get right to market. I would have thought with all your experience that it's like, okay, we can do it, do this on our own. So what was the thought process behind actually taking up that offer to consider coming into the GROW program? Well, I think anytime um, you, you're working with a new product, um, a new team uh, growing, we were in GROW. Uh, we we knew the opportunities in front of us just to get exposure to the you know some of the like you said department heads within Salesforce who were newer marketing opportunities. Uh, we had a ton of opportunities that came up right after that and during that building relationships, uh, working with other ISP partners. That's been huge. Uh, some of the things that came out of that were monthly or quarterly meetings with the CEOs that were part of that program. And then uh, a marketing uh, group also from each company started working together and what works for you and what doesn't work for you. I mean, Salesforce went from a, let's say, you know, 5,000 person company to a 35,000 person company during that period of time. And so it, anytime you have the opportunity uh, in front of you to have that exposure and have that learning, and be able to ask those questions, it was it was uh, it it was huge for us. I we still refer back to it quite often. And as I said, it it's you know carried us along this entire way. There were also mentors uh, involved. We learned more about you know our website and honing our message and who we're really targeting, selling selling like Salesforce, marketing like Salesforce. When you go to uh, a Dreamforce, for example, you can kind of Look at the partners who really understand selling like Salesforce and marketing like Salesforce, and the I, I think the potential customers that they they kind of get that much more quickly than when you're just trying to sell directly to some customers who also use Salesforce or use the Salesforce platform. Right, right. And as you know, um, as you know, and maybe you know for the edification of the of the audience, you know the Accelerate program it's really structured around three pillars of success from our perspective in terms of how we see it. You know, there's knowledge, there's access, and then there's the advising piece of it. You know, the knowledge component is really focused around strategic alignment, positioning and messaging, go-to-market best practices, things things that we did kind of every day uh, within the grow cohort. The advising component, you know, it allows you to connect with subject matter experts, uh, primarily within Salesforce, but we've done a good job in terms of actually um, inviting in uh, industry experts as well. These are typically folks that either have come from Salesforce or have deep domain expertise in terms of working with Salesforce, including on the VC side as well. Um, and then the last piece of it, just in terms of access, 
that you were mentioning before, um, and you also, Jason, uh, access to Salesforce, fellow cohort members, that whole networking piece of it, it really rounds out kind of that accelerate formula. So kind of with that in mind, you know, because I really want to focus now on the growth side of it, I'll ask the same question that I asked Jason before. It's like, what was it like for you during the program? So may, maybe just recount, you know, some of the highlights, at least from your perspective, or what it was like to actually participate um, through that exercise on the grow side. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think we were we were like sponges. <laughs> we took everything in. Uh, I, I took my VP of uh, marketing and customer success with me. So we attended in person uh, at every single event. And then, of course, the, the ones online. Relationship building, I would say, is huge. The Salesforce ecosystem in general, I believe, is really built on relationships and community. And so it was just a part of uh, a part of that, an extension of that, uh, a way for us to become more and more a part of the community. We were given uh, many opportunities that we would not have had access to after that particular program, including you know speaking engagements and being included in eBooks and press and things like that. Uh, coming back and, and being able to reach out to, to those people, both on the VC side, like you mentioned, Mike, and industry side. And even now, I'm, <clears throat> we, we have access to folks within Salesforce that we wouldn't have even known at that time, that w I reach out to all the time, and, and Jill does, and then understanding more and more about the technology is another thing because Salesforce is so innovative rapidly innovative, both on development and acquisitions. I don't think I have to tell you that. So we have to stay on top of it as well, especially the nature of our product, which is we work with uh, the, the customer's metadata and really analyzing it and cleaning it up and, and optimizing and uh, impact analysis and things like that. So as Salesforce grows, our uh, market research continues to grow and we, we learn a lot from our customers, not, you know, and what their needs are, but also a lot from within Salesforce and uh, the product roadmap and, and where we're, where you're going and where we're going. So all of it is invaluable, not only while you're there, I, I think it was almost like a blur, but <laughs> the amount of notes and, uh, and resources available that we still refer back to, but also what just carries you forward from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, th I think I saw a question that that came in the in the chat before in the in the or the, the Q and A before. It was actually asking or probing around uh, what what are the resources from from a company perspective that are needed, uh, specifically on the financial resources side. So one of the things I wanted to call out is is that Jason, you had you had taken money um, at that point, so you were capitalized. I would say you were still in that early stage of capitalization, but nonetheless, there was investors there. Uh, Jennifer, on your side, as you said, in the second go around, you were bootstrapping. And that I think is one of the things that we wanna get out to the audience as well is, is that um, I myself have a predisposition to really look for and back the bootstrap founders because typically those are the ones perhaps that are working in a niche area that may be overlooked. And one of the things that I've seen time and time again is the opportunity that the Salesforce ecosystem provides, get in with a niche product, solve a particular problem, and you'll be able to then find, you know, through that product market fit, other opportunities that are, uh, that are adjacent. I think it's not necessarily unique to Salesforce, but it's definitely, um, it, it's, it's definitely something that's, I find easier to do in the Salesforce ecosystem than in other places. So, um, it isn't it, it isn't one of those things that from a criteria perspective on the build side that, hey, we're looking for well-capitalized companies to come in. I mentioned before, ability to execute predominantly is, rests on the shoulders of the founders and the initial team that, that's coming into this. So I think that that was a very good point. So just, you know, kind of rounding this out, and I, I know that we want to get to some questions as well. Um, just with uh, Metazoa right now, I mean, you you were in the GROW program. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, you were growing coming out of that. How has it been since, you know, for Metazoa since uh, si since that time? So, so fortunately, we've had a tremendous amount of uh, success moving forward. We've had a lot of growth. We are still bootstrapped. Uh, there's no um, issues about getting funding. We're approached every day and 
especially being a Salesforce partner in the ecosystem, I have more and more uh, venture capitalists reaching out, wanting to become more a part of the Salesforce ecosystem, seeing all of the success of a lot of the partners. Congratulations to you, Jason. Uh, and seeing uh, not only uh, IPOs and acquisitions and just success in general, I'm waiting for the right time. Fortunately, because of our success, we're able to uh, continue down this path, um, shifting uh, a little bit with uh, looking at different trends that are happening and our pricing and packaging and being able to reach out to certain mentors within Salesforce and, and getting feedback. But uh, yeah, we are bootstrapped. Um, it's, it's just looking for the right time and the right valuation and being able to take that time I've done it both ways. So this is, this is, you know, newer for us since we were very traditional at the beginning, but it's, it's been going amazingly well. Uh, our, our growth is, it kind of went like this and now it's going like this. So we're, we're getting a lot of access to, I think, um, a lot of the largest customers, not only that, we're really starting to have the internal SEs and customer success teams uh, point to us. So it, that took a little while. We were about three years old. I had to come back into the ecosystem really with a different product and educate uh, Salesforce internally, the AEs, the SEs, and the customer success team on, on what uh, problems that we solve. And now <clears throat> they're really starting to point to us and we're getting more and more, uh, hey, you know, I'm an enterprise customer and I have this team behind me at Salesforce and the, this, these problems and, and they're pointing us, you know, to us as the solution. Yeah. So um, just before we roll into maybe taking a stream of questions here before we wrap up, uh, maybe both of you can actually just give us a, a few of your uh, insights, if you wish, for folks that may be considering the program or actually even just jumping into the ecosystem as well. You know what? You know maybe some takeaways either from the program or or some direct advice for those uh, uh, founders out there who are who perha perhaps are looking into working with Salesforce. Why don't we start with you, uh, Jennifer? Okay. Uh, well, I, I think as far as developing on Salesforce, the Salesforce platform, the ecosystem, as as Mike mentioned, uh, versus developing elsewhere, I have been inside and outside the ecosystem. It's. The, the amount of resources and opportunities within the Salesforce ecosystem, I find are vastly unique. Uh, if, if you're uh, just on another marketplace, you don't really have that community. You don't have the ability to reach out, ask questions. Uh, you know, I know Chatter's moving over to Slack, but you know, you can ask a question every day on the ISV partner channel or the marketing channel, find out new opportunities. And that's really different than any other marketplace out there. Just, just having that ability to also work with other ISV partners. I think that's a, a huge reason, not only that, but the innovation and ability to integrate with all different aspects of Salesforce at this point, because you do have the AI and the APIs and you know now the Slack integration and this, the amount of opportunities for any developer or any uh, high tech company SaaS, B2B, enterprise, or consumer. So those, those are the reasons that I think I would uh, definitely take a look at the platform, which is now a huge platform. I had an investor say to me the other day, it seems like Salesforce is uh, less of a CRM company and more of a platform company now. So I think you're both, but it's, uh, it's definitely has the reputation of being a development platform in the investment community. And then as far as being a part of the Accelerate community, again, it's invaluable. It's the relationships. It's the being able to ask questions. Uh, just even working with our partner account manager and, uh, and, and up the chain, we're able to really, I think, take advantage of the resources because we know more. So we don't go in there and just wait for our partner account manager to offer us something. We, we know what to go ask for. And we wouldn't have known that had we not been a part of the program, had we not, you know, m met many different ISV partners and be able to talk to them and talk to uh, the community in general. Right. That's great. What about you, Jason? What are your key takeaways? Um, I guess the first thing I would say is, yeah, you don't have to be 
part of the accelerator to be able to benefit from all the resources. That that sort of was our way to find out about the Salesforce platform. But um, there's if you if you just you know type Salesforce Trailhead getting started, there's so many resources that it's almost surprising how, how many <laughs> resources there are um, to get started and to learn about everything you need to know about building an application. It's helpful to have some of the expert guidance from people if you're actually in the program, but in many cases, you could probably network to them anyway and ask questions that you were talking about in Chatter, or um, if you reach out to most people, they're, they're happy to help. So my, my advice would be if, if it's something you're thinking about, um, I don't know if there's a, there's a, uh, a way to get in touch, Mike, with the Accelerate program before just applying, but if reach out to me or any, anybody that, that you know and, and start trying to just start networking so that you can practice how much more you would do it if you actually got into the the program itself. Um, and, and so, yeah, my biggest uh, learning or takeaway was the, what I said earlier about being inside the wall. Like it, it's hard, a little bit harder to break in if you're on the outside, but once you're in the program or once you've connected to some of the people on this call, for example, um, you're inside and you become part of the, the larger family. And then, and then you can pretty much do anything, reach out to anyone. As long as you have something exciting you're working on that helps customers, you can reach out to even probably Mark, right? As long as you, <laughs> he, he would probably appreciate that. As long as you like have something exciting that can help a customer and are genuine about wanting to do that, um, everyone's open to helping. And that's one of the things that I would totally agree is different about. We were in a bunch of platforms as well. Um, you know, different marketplaces and this app store and this thing. And this is the only one that really uh, works as a team and everyone benefits. Salesforce, of course, benefits from having tons of people on the app exchange. So it's not like it's a one-sided thing or a charity. It's, it's we all move forward more successfully together. So that, that's what I would say. And if, yeah, don't hesitate to reach out, um, try and network as, as much as you can um, and have something to, sh to show, um, have, have a great demo, have a great couple of slides about how you solve a customer problem. If you have something to show and you connect with someone and, and show them how you can actually help, then that's the way to be able to network to anyone. Oh, well, thanks so much. That's fantastic. Uh, I know we just, you want to take yeah, what's this coming up on time? I know oh, it's been such a great conversation with Jennifer and Jason and Mike. Um, I just had a couple of things to wrap up with, I page through them so folks can see, but if you wanna learn more about the Salesforce Accelerate program, you can go to the uh, site here. Um, you can also go, come to Dreamforce. Everything's good. We have some um, in person, about 5,000 in person, everyone else, millions online. Uh, you can find out more at salesforce.com slash Dreamforce. And of course, everyone online and or listening to the recording should come to SAS Connect. This is in November. This is our big uh, SaaS partnership conference. We're very excited this year. It's going to be in person at Bespoke in San Francisco. Um, so you will learn more here at the SaaS Connect uh, link here at the bottom. Um, any, with just two minutes, um, any other questions that we have not answered that we can do quickly, Mike? Uh, very quickly, there was one uh, asking about the criteria to be categorized as an underrepresented developer or partner. Um, and if you look at the uh, definition uh, from a U.S. perspective in terms of disadvantaged businesses, uh, that would be a good place to start. But uh, ultimately, there is an open text uh, field when you're actually applying that allows you to describe uh, why you categorize yourself as an underrepresented group uh, member. Great. So kind of with that, I, I want to thank uh, Jason and Jennifer. Thanks so much for coming and sharing your, uh, your experience with everybody. And uh, this was fun. Yeah, very thank fun. Thank you, thank you everyone. You, yeah, of course. Thanks everyone for joining. Jennifer, Jason, again, thank you thank so you. much for your time. All right. Bye-bye everyone. Mm -hmm.